So, Yitzchak Avinu, <clears throat> it's really this Parsha that, this is the only Parsha that's really Yitzchak Avinu Dick. It's only Yitzchak Avinu Dick. You have a lot of the Parsha talking about Yitzchak Avinu and, you know, the whole story with him giving the brachas. He wants to give the brachas to Esau, eventually he gives the brachas to Yaakov and so on. <clears throat> but Yitzchak Avinu, we know, according to the Sormak Daishem, is very much connected to Hanukkah. Yitzchak is connected to Hanukkah. How do we know? So, first of all, even the fact that Yitzchak Avinu is the one that becomes blind, right? Yitzchak Avinu says in the Chumash, in the Sixth Parsh, that, that he, he became older, but the Chana Einav Meroi said his eyesight began to, began, uh, began to dull, he, be, he became blind. We know Chazal tell us that Yavan, Greece, the, the Golas of Greece, which is the Yant of Hanukkah, comes out of that Golas. Uh, the Golas of, of Yavan is described as Chayshech of darkness. Yichshichu Eneim, they darken the eyes of Kal Yisrael. Therefore, the darkening of Yitzchak's eyes means the exile of Greece, which means that Yitzchak therefore contains the antidote to Yavan. If he himself embodies the, 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 you know, the, the, the exile of Yavan, it means that he has the answer. That's why even Yitzchak Avinu, it's brought down this term, Yitzchak Avinu lived for 180 years, that's how, that's how old he was. And that's exactly, the Gemara Babasar says, that's exactly how long the uh, Malchus of Greece lasted as well, 180 years. So Yitzchak, Yitzchak equals Yavan. Yitzchak equals Yavan. And so, if Yitzchak Avinu therefore is connected with Yavan, it must be that in Yitzchak Avinu's own life, it must be contained, the, uh, the solution to Yavan, the response to Yavan, the Yantav So how so? So it's like this. What's, so there's, there's a, a point with Yitzchak Avinu, one part of the, his life story, that's very similar to Avram Avinu, but in one major point it's a little bit different. Avram Avinu, we know, went, when he first was sent to Eretz Yisrael, by Lech Lecha, so he came to Eretz Yisrael, he, you know, he saw there was a famine, he was forced down to Egypt, and a little bit later on also another famine came and he was forced to the land of the Plishtim, to the land of Avimelech, and in both situations the same thing sort of happened. That Sari Menu was a very beautiful woman. Sari Menu was captured both by Para in Mitzrayim and by Avimelech in Pelishtim. And it was the same story that Avram Avinu w- was saying that he was afraid of this happening and what would me- and his life would be in danger. So he says that she's my sister, she's my sister. They take her, they find out that they're actually married, and uh, it sort of blows up in his face. And uh, Avram Avinu is sent away from Para and sent away from Avimelech. The same thing happens. Now Yitzchak is also similar. Yitzchak Avinu also, because of a famine, has to go to the place of, of the Plish, to Avimelech. And he also has this plan that Rivka might be captured. And so he says, going in, she's my sister, she's my sister. But here's the difference, is that instead of, like, Sarah, who was actually captured, nothing happened to her, but she was captured, when it comes to Rivka, they thought about taking her, but it didn't actually happen. It didn't actually happen. And Avimelech finds out that they're husband and wife, not brother and sister, and he's all upset. He says, because what if because we were thinking about taking her, and she was uh, your wife instead of your sister. So it didn't actually happen, but there was a thought of such a thing. So the question is that, good to see you again. So one, the, the question is, like, what does that tell us? That Sari Mina was captured twice. Rivka, the same plan was put into motion, but it didn't actually happen. So the answer is, the Nabi Melch writes, he says like this, he says that, I think it's in, it's in Parshish Pinchas, he writes this, the Rebbe Melch, he says that Sari Mina being captured means that it's sort of foreshadowing the reality that in Gullus there's going to be difficult times and, uh, you know, Sari Menu represents the Jewish people, re- represents the Shechina, the Divine Presence, which is the Jewish people. And her being captured by Pari and Avimelech means, you know, Gullus, deep, dark Gullus. But you know Yitzchak Gevinu. But Yitzchak Gevinu, the fact that he has Rivka as a wife, and Avimelech has a plan of taking Rivka, but it doesn't end up happening. It means that Yitzchak Avinu is saying that it's possible in Golas to mamish have a little bit of, a, of an oasis, to have a little bit of a bubble of everything's fine. Where they'll plot, they'll around, they'll be, you know, uh, inyanim going on, Avimelech is planning to take it, but nothing ends up happening. Yitzchak is able to sit with Rivka, Shalom B'Shalva, everything's fine, and, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, they're, they're, pl- they're planning, they're plotting, they're, they're, they're coming with all their hachanas to do something. Or the Maisi Yitzchak and Rivka are just sitting nicely with Shalom Bayez. Ke'ilu, they're still in Eretz Yisrael, in a nice way, Yerushalayim, everything's fine. And so Yitzchak Avinu 
is the, what is Chanukah? Chanukah is this. Chanukah is that in the middle of Galus, because that's really what the second base of Middash Bechla was. The whole second base of Middash, within which Chanukah is the antif of the second base of Middash, it wasn't a real gula. It was just a little breather, just a little bubble, a little place that, amongst the craziness that started with the destruction of the first base of Middash, which continues all the way to the rebuilding of the third, well, it's a dark place. Chanukah says, but in that dark place, it's possible to have a little bit of a pocket. It's possible to, to create for yourself a little bit of a pocket. And in that little little space, Rivka and Yitzchak are able to sit nice, peacefully, and Rivka's safe and sound in that little pocket. Doesn't mean that the neighbor around you is going crazy. The neighbor around is going crazy. But in your little place that you can make for yourself within Golas, it's possible to have Yishavadas and Menucha and peace in that place. This is why Chanukah is also very much connected to Shabbos. Right. Both Shabbos and Hanukkah both share um, candle lighting. Right. Shalom Bayis is a major nekud in both. Hanukkah, Hanukkah itself is 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 the halachas of Hanukkah are all around the house. Right. Shalom, the, you light Hanukkah, you light Shabbos candles for Shalom Bayis purposes as well. Shabbos, Shabbos <coughs> is also this bechin. Shabbos is a little bit of a bubble. See, Shabbos is not just the seventh day of the week. Shabbos is a time machine. Shabbos is a is a is a is a is a time warp. It's a, it's a wormhole, I guess you can say, right, in that way, if there's such a thing exists. So yeah, it, meaning what? It means that we're living in a world right now of nature, of, uh, of Teva, Bechira, craziness. And then the next world, that's a place where it's all Hashem and it's all perfect. Shabbos means a little taste of that place. A little bit of a window into that place. It's an oasis, it's a little bubble. And that's exactly what Hanukkah is. It's not... It's not taking care of the problem, doesn't solve any issues, just gives you a little bit of a breather, and it gives you the confidence that you can have a little taste of something good and some peacefulness in this crazy world. And that's okay, when that happens, you hold on to it. And you say, you know what, Baruch Hashem for the moment that I can have a little bit of, of Menucha and Yishev Adas, right? So, you know, a little work there right now, I'm just sitting here for a few minutes, that's okay, just appreciate it right now, just appreciate it right now. I was going to be in 10 minutes from now, maybe there's a meeting, a crazy new day. That's in 10 minutes. is going to kill me in 10 minutes. In 10 minutes. But right now he's not. So that's the 10 minutes. That's, that's Hanukkah. That's Hanukkah. Right now. Right now. A little bubble. A little moment. A little breathe oxygen. And then you go on Vaita. That's what Hanukkah is. Even in Plishtim. In Golis, Rivka and Yitzchak can sit nicely and peacefully. Doesn't, in Golis, it doesn't... Golis doesn't mean that Rivka is always captured. That's what it means. It means you can have a breather. There's such a thing. To have a little bit of Yishev a little bit of taste of Olam Haba, Taimer Chaim Zachu, even before Olam Haba comes. No? So Hashem Shal, we should have, uh, appreciate the breathers, and all those breathers should, slowly but surely, maybe quickly but surely, add up to the point of where it's just cool to breather. And so we should be Zachat to the Gula Shlema, Amitis, Meher Vimeinu Amen. Amen.